Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about rational and irrational numbers. Um, and I think this might take quite a while, so I'm going to do two parts most likely. Uh, we need to know the difference between rational numbers, like uh, simple fractions like three-fifths, or the number three, or the number five, just easy to understand numbers. When we talk about irrational numbers, we talk about numbers like pi that go on and on and on and on forever without repeating a pattern. That's a really important thing to know. After the decimal there is no repeating numbers. This is uh, basically what the standard tells us. It says that students need to know the numbers that are not rational are called irrational. The numbers that have, uh, all numbers have a decimal expansion, etc, etc. I'll let you read that on your own. Uh, make sure you understand all the things there. Uh, what's going to help us a lot though is that Rational numbers repeat a zero forever or a perfect pattern like two seven two seven two seven two seven And I'll show you what that looks like. They put a little line above the two and the seven uh, But irrational numbers never have a repeating pattern Okay, so we're gonna be asked questions like this which of the following is an irrational number so we just go through all all four choices and decide this particular number Oops, excuse me. Look at my pen here. Would have a zero and repeats that zero forever. That's going to be rational. And in a fraction, anytime I see a rational number in both the numerator and the denominator, that's going to be rational as well. So I'm going to call the two rational. I'm going to call five rational. And I know that is a rational number. Here, the 12 is a rational number, but pi is our easiest one to understand once we have that memorized. The pi is irrational. It repeats. It's not just 3.14. It's 3.14, etc., 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 forever and ever and ever. So it is irrational. And 20, the square root of 25 could, of course, be written as 5, which is rational. So let's work on getting these things memorized, these rules for rational versus irrational. And hopefully we'll get a good understanding of it. Okay, this particular question, I've seen a lot of kids in my career get this wrong because it just looks like so much. It asks uh, for only rational numbers. My advice to my students is always simply look for an irrational number in the choice. So if I see an irrational number, I know that is not it. Pi is irrational. I see pi in this one, so that's not it. So now I simply have to choose between B and C. Again, in a radical sign, if I do not know, like the square root of 25 I knew was 5, the square root of 9 I know is 3, but the square root of 51 I don't know, so I would have to put that in a calculator and it will get me decimals forever and it will never ever repeat a pattern, so that one I don't know. The square root of 8 I do not know and would give me decimals forever. The square root of 39 I do not know. All of those are irrational numbers. Again, this asks for only rational numbers. 15 is, 5 is. If we remember our negative exponent rule, that could be 1 fourth. 1 fourth is rational, 4 is rational, excuse me, 1 is rational, 4 is rational. And 32.06 would have a 0 repeating after it. And that, of course, is rational also. So my right answer, only rational numbers in the choice is choice C here. Hope that makes sense. Just look for irrational numbers and get rid of that choice. Here they're only asking me to find one irrational number. So if I look at this, this is uh, 10 to the fourth power, which is 10,000. Multiply this by 10,000, that'll just move the decimal four spaces to the right and it'll be 98,700. That's a rational number. Again, we're only looking for an irrational, I see pi. That's my answer, B. This one's not irrational because the square root of 4 is 2. I have a 2 in my numerator, a 2 in my denominator, which of course equals 1, which is rational. And choice D has that repeating bar over. That means that those 3s repeat forever. It has a perfect repeating pattern, which is rational. Let's take a look at another one. Same kind of thing. Again, for radicals, all I have to do is find the one that I don't know. 
and maybe you don't know them all, so I would recommend using my calculator. Square root of 3, you'll look at the answer and you'll never see a repeating pattern. That is going to be irrational. When I take a test, though, I like to check everything else. 4, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of 25 is 5. So I have a rational number, a rational number, a rational number, and a long, never repeating number like the square root of 3. Irrational. I wish it were all that easy. I'm sure most of my students do too. Here we go, looking for an irrational number. A little bit different looking type question. Again, this one stops right there at the 3. That means that there's a 0 after it and it repeats forever. That is rational. Same exact thing here. I see the 2, 1. It stops right there. That means there's a 0 after it and it repeats. That would be rational. Multiplying by 1,000 or 10 to the third power would move this three spaces. The decimal would be after the 6. And the same exact thing as the top two answers. That would be a 0 repeating and rational. And just like on the previous problem, the square root of 3, we decided was irrational. Because it never, ever, ever repeats that pattern. Let's take a look at one or two more, and then we'll maybe work on part two later. They want to know what type of number 302.14, or 14 one hundredths, is. Again, I want everyone to memorize that when it stops like that, or terminates, as they say in the definition, that means there is a zero after it that repeats forever, and our repeating decimals are rational. So, it is most definitely a rational number. Whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, four, five. They're whole numbers. There's no, technically, no decimal after it. Actually, technically, there is a decimal, but it would be zeros after it, just like eight or 12. No, no fraction here. An integer is uh, similar to that, but it might be negative eight, might be five. Excuse that's an ugly five. Uh, maybe negative 13. Kind of like whole numbers, but it includes the negatives as well. So our rational number is uh, 302.14 or 14 hundredths. Let's take a look at one more, and then we'll work on part two. They want to know what type of number negative 3 fourths is. Well, it's certainly not an integer. And it's certainly not a whole number. I sure hope I can talk all my students into using the strike-through tool when they take big tests. So now I've got to decide if it's rational or irrational. And again, in fractions, if I have a rational number in the numerator and a rational number in the denominator, then the fraction is rational. If there's a pi symbol or a square root of 5 or something in, in either the numerator or denominator, then it would be irrational. Okay, as always, thanks for your attention.